Well, the date that we've opted for is 2035 um, in, in the motion, and the, the reason for that is it's quite straightforward, actually. Um, the IPCC report suggests that uh, the whole world needs to be at a, a, at a carbon neutral state by 2030. Um, there been recent declarations in the UK along similar lines, although their target date is still 2050. Jersey have recently declared a 2030 date for themselves. So worldwide, there is an acceptance that we have to move quite quickly on this. The Isle of Man, however, is in a slightly uh, unique position because we have a, a very expensive, very efficient power plant uh, that's running and powers uh, most of our electricity generation, if I'm going to be honest. And so that, that expected life runs out in the mid-2030s. So 2034, 2035 is roughly when the expectation is that power plant's life will be expired and will need to be replaced by something. So my hope is that that's replaced by some uh, renewable, sustainable electricity generation. Uh, and if you look at the climate change consultation that's out, again, 2035 is where you see a huge drop in uh, emissions, and that's off the back of the expectation the power plant will be closed. And so really there's only a small gap between uh, what's left after that and a net zero position. So to my mind, we should be able to address that as we approach 2035, so that switching the power plant off, rather than being the start of our uh, significant emissions drop, would actually be the last action in our emissions reduction strategy. So 2035 makes a lot of sense uh, in that context. So is it fair to say then that you don't think this current government is ambitious enough with its 2050 target? The 2050 target is a bit of an unusual one uh, because it was approved by the last Tinwald. The last administration had this target of 80% reduction by 2050 on 1990 levels. Um, this government has gone a slight step further and said, well, that 80% is now going to be 100% uh, reduction by uh, 2050. Um, my challenge to that would be, well, if it's an emergency, you had a 2050 target before it was an emergency. Now it's an emergency but you're keeping the same 2050 target. How much of an emergency is it then in their eyes if you don't really have to make any significant change to your plan uh, from what you had three, four, five years ago? I mean, the Isle of Man is even party to things like the Kyoto Protocol, which mandates a reduction towards these dates anyway. So the government's position by retaining their original 2050 target, they're essentially admitting that they don't really see this as a big priority. They don't really see this as a challenge, uh, as, as a significant challenge to the island, because they're saying the previous targets, the previous aims we had were perfectly acceptable. So I think when you, if you're going to take that, that step of saying this is an emergency, it's something that has to be dealt with, you have to then revisit your original plans, your original targets, and say, well, if it's an emergency, action needs to be taken sooner rather than later. So we need to bring some of those targets forward. Climate change is referenced in the programme for government. It is something that I wouldn't say it's central to it, but it's, it, it, it is mentioned. But it, I, I suppose it's fair to say that it's very much become an afterthought, these, these recent um, developments in, in relation to it. What, what do you make of the current administration, the Quail administration's record on, on climate change? I, I think uh, they've been criticised by other MHKs about their, their lack of ambition in this space. And I, I think that's something that definitely comes through the programme for government. I think there's, there's one action in the programme for government that specifically refers to reducing our carbon footprint. Um, we have seen other strategies, other policies come forward uh, that have an element of climate change mitigation built into them. And I think that, for me, is the way we should be thinking about this, rather than trying to treat our emissions, uh, our climate impact as an isolated case. We should be building it into everything that we do. So when we're developing new housing policy, uh, we should be thinking about not only the equality impact and the social impact, but also the environmental impact of those policies. And that, that should be a, a theme that runs through uh, a lot of the decisions, if not all the decisions that we make, to make sure that we're not adversely impacting when we are developing new policies in other areas. And, and that, I think, is, is a gap that we have at the moment, where the program for government almost tries to treat climate mitigation as, an, as, as a world unto itself, without accepting that actually a lot of these things are very heavily interrelated in, in the way we live, the way that our infrastructure is developed, and with everything else that government does. So I suppose tomorrow, with the, Daphne Kane's environmental protection motion of this climate emergency, is very much going to test the will of Timber members. Um, I think the Chief Minister has outlined that he's quite actually disappointed that this mo motion is, is staying on the paper um, and called it grandstanding. But is it fair to, fair to say that this issue actually needs a grandstander? I think in, in response to those comments, I, I was actually quite disappointed at the way that the government has chosen to go about this. So they made a very public uh, declaration in, in an interview that uh, there is no emergency. They weren't going to make their minds up until the consultation had finished. And then six days later, before the consultation finished, they made their mind up. So not only going back on their position, but completely reversing it, actually. Whereas the right thing to do, if this is a serious issue, which it is a serious issue, they should have come to Timwald with their own declaration, make a statement, uh, bring a motion, whatever it is, to make that 
very clear that this is a central tenet of government policy. Now, government has chosen not to lead on this, has chosen not to take that action. And as a result, uh, Daphne Kane has decided that, well, someone needs to step up to the plate. And that's the right thing to do when, when you're seeing inaction on behalf of government, especially on something that is so fundamentally important as uh, the planet on which we live and the environment we want the Isle of Man to be, then someone has to step up. And government's reluctance to do that, I think, is what's prompted this debate in the first place. If if the, the response to the initial interview questions had been, we absolutely think this is important, we absolutely think something needs to be done, and we'll be bringing something to Tim Wald in, in very short order, I don't think you'd have seen this motion in the first place. I think the very uh, lacklustre response is what's caused this this reaction, if I want to better phrase. And you very much support the motion by, by Daphne Kane, but you, I imagine there's a couple of amendments that you'd like to see changed. As I, as I said uh, in the, the release that, that's been published uh, by the Lib Van Party, the, the position of the party is absolutely we support this formal acceptance, formal declaration that we are living through a worldwide uh, climate emergency. Uh, you know That's been accepted, I think, on an international level. And we absolutely support that declaration, but for us as a party and for me individually, I think that the motion that was tabled didn't quite go far enough. I'd very much like to see Tim Wald set out its aims and ambitions at a very high level and say, we, we really think that uh, for the Isle of Man, the right direction of travel is to say we're going to be carbon neutral by 2035. Let's go away and develop a detailed plan as to how we get there. That's definitely the next stage, and that's definitely where government's consultation will feed into this. They're, they're going out and asking about the actions they should be taking. Absolutely the right thing to do, but we have to have an end date in mind, I think. And for me, that end date really needs to be as soon as we can practically make it. And 2035 would seem to be that date for the Isle of Man.